It was billed as a landmark moment in our relations with the planet. But did the Glasgow conference do anything to limit the rise in temperatures? The man at the centre of the talks, Alex Sharma, had to shuttle between delegations. China and India not allowing coal to be phased out, only to be phased down. The pressure really showed at one point. And the final wording on coal has left disappointment. But this evening in Downing Street, Mr Sharma admitted how the deal was very nearly lost. For months people have been asking me, um, uh, some of you good people have been asking me, do you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders? And I can tell you there was one really tense hour where I did feel the weight of the world on my shoulders. And, you know, so many people have done so much over two years, the UK team internationally, and, you know, this deal was absolutely in jeopardy. His efforts at the conference were praised by opposition parties, but they also warned there's a long way to go. We have made some progress and we have to acknowledge that, but we also have to acknowledge that we failed in getting that target of 1.5 and we must keep that pressure on because it will be catastrophic for areas of the world and for our planet, so we've got more to do. So what happens now? Well, by the end of next year, countries should update their climate pledges, a faster pace than before, and they are now expected to do this more often. By 2024, a package of long-term financial aid for the poorest nations should be agreed. And then by 2030, to avoid the worst of global warming, carbon emissions should be halved. But we're still a long way from achieving that. So as things stand, the polar ice will melt faster than ever, raising sea levels and together with heavier rain, threatening millions of people with flooding. The implications of failing to act soon have never been clearer. We've already warmed by 1.1 degrees Celsius since pre-industrial times. And the hope is that one and a half will be the limit of the rise. But we're heading for at least 1.8, and that's only if every promise is kept. More realistically, we're on course for about 2.4, a really dangerous level. The difference between 1.5 and 2.4 is, is really survival of millions and millions of people and species in the, in the planet. This is uh, what is uh, particularly true for the islands. But according to Camilla Bourne, a government advisor at the heart of the talks, the worst outcomes can be averted. We have kept 1.5 alive, but on the basis of delivering on those commitments, and that will be our next task for us as the presidency, but for all the countries, and it's on us to make sure that this is real in action. The key to that is what's happening far beyond the conference. The spectacular fall in the price of renewable forms of energy. They now make good business sense, whatever gets agreed in talks about climate change. The arguments here over the last fortnight were about words on a page, and in the end they may or may not prove important. What matters more is the signal sent by this gathering and others to come to businesses, investors, banks, all of us, that with the right pace and scale of change, it should still be possible to get the world onto a safer course. David Shookman, BBC News in Glasgow.